Let's look at an overview of the Block Surfaces plugin and how it works. Block Surfaces is an add-in designed to help with blocking characters of all kinds. The add-in is based on creating branches generated from the objects in each collection. For each branch there will be an object that has the geometry nodes modifier that will generate the surface from one object to another. Based on the objects of the associated collection. To start working with the add-in, We have to have an object selected and by pressing new branch or with the shortcut Control plus N we create a new branch. To this we can give it the name of the character it belongs to and the name for the branch itself. This operation will create the base to work with block surfaces. Which is the collection where the objects are that will define the shape of the branch. And the block surfaces object which is the one that with a geometry node generates the surface between them. So when creating this branch, the object within the collection is selected. With the keyboard shortcut E. It will duplicate the selected object, this will be like extruding the branch we are working on. The block surfaces object generates the surface from one object to another in the order the collection objects are in. Then in the collection we will have the objects that will give shape to the branch, and the other object defines the shape between them here. We can show and hide this object. Here we can select the visualization to see the colors of each branch for better identification of each one. So if we continue with the keyboard shortcut E it will create another object and the branch objects we can edit as we want. To achieve the desired shape, we continue extruding, relocating, adjusting the objects will allow us to focus on basic shapes. We quickly build a torso. In these branches, we can make them have a hierarchy between the branch objects. With the keyboard shortcut P. This establishes a hierarchy in the branch of each object to the next in the direction marked by the appearance of the object name. The name will appear in the direction where the parents are. Each object will be the parent of the next one in the indicated direction. If I press P again, it will change the direction and now the parents will be in the other direction. So if I press P it changes the direction of the hierarchy quickly. This way we can use this property to modify several objects at the same time as here. And have control over a large part of the branch easily and quickly. So P establishes and changes the direction of the hierarchy. And if I use the keyboard shortcut Control plus Shift plus Alt plus P it would remove that hierarchy between the objects. And so we could go back to editing each object individually. So it is very easy to add or remove hierarchies within the branch. All these keyboard shortcuts can be changed in the add-in configuration. We have the keyboard shortcut V that allows us to visualize or not the generated mesh. And in this way to more easily modify the branch objects. It continues showing these and hides this the generated mesh. Seeing it better what we are doing, the branch objects can be edited in any way we want. In object mode, edit mode or sculpt mode. Even applying modifiers. In the end the resulting model will be the one used to generate the volume of the final mesh. If I show the mesh again with shortcut V. We see that it adapts to the final shape we left the object within the collection. So you can use any method, editing, sculpting, etc. And the final shape will adapt and this gives a lot of freedom to achieve the desired shapes. Something very important to keep in mind to understand how the add-in works is how the final mesh is generated. The object that generates the mesh has a geometry nodes that generates the surface based on the alphabetical order the branch objects have. 
so it will create the surface starting with the first one and will continue generating surface from one object to another. In the direction of the order of the objects in the collection. To move between the branch objects, when they become difficult to select because others are hiding or they are very close together. We can use the up arrow or down arrow keyboard shortcut to select the next branch object in one direction or the other. And we have the left arrow or right arrow keyboard shortcuts to move directly from the first to the last branch object. These shortcuts make manipulating the branch very fast. Additionally, allowing managing many branches quickly and best of all. The possibility of having hierarchies between branches and within branches will allow us to quickly configure characters and even pose them. If with the shortcut V we could visualize the generated mesh or hide it, with the keyboard shortcut Alt plus V we can select the generated mesh. This allows us to quickly access the properties of the generated mesh and for example change its material as we want. We can also change the colors here, this allows us to change the color of all objects and the collections of all branches. And here we can change the color of the material of the final generated mesh. Then we can go back to the collection object with the shortcut Alt plus V. So this is the base and from here we can use many tools to create branches, duplicate them, etc. Let's create a new branch as we started, with the shortcut to create a new branch with a selected object. This can be an object from another branch. We create a new branch and give it a name. So now we have a new object that belongs to a new collection and a new block surfaces object that generates the new surface. Again, we go with the shortcut E generating the new shape so quickly. We can hide the branch objects in this option, so we will see the generated meshes better, more cleanly. We can continue seeing it by pressing V or if you want to edit or sculpt it. So we go adjusting the shape of each object. Then, as we can make the branch have a hierarchy between its objects, quickly this is already an articulated arm. But we can also make hierarchies between branches, so we are going to join the arm branch with the torso. We select with the shortcuts the first object and then going up to the object that corresponds to being the parent in the torso. With the shortcut we make the arm branch a child of a torso object. Then we already have quickly articulated the torso with its arm. Don't worry about the keyboard shortcuts, you can configure them as you want in the add-in options. As we've seen to create a new branch. We can do it from an object of an existing branch like here. Or from a loose object. Let's see how to delete while working with block surfaces. With the add-ins delete option and. Keyboard shortcut X we will have this menu where we can delete the entire branch. Or just the selected objects. So we delete an object. Or here to delete the entire so it clears the collection plus the object that generates the surface. Now knowing this, let's see something very important for the add-in to behave correctly. We must use this way to delete objects or branches. Never delete from Blender's delete operator. Because as I explained before the generation of the final mesh is based on the order of the objects. For example, if we change the name of this object, the expected mesh generation is no longer correct. As you can see, now that object is the last in the branch, so the mesh is generated from what is now before that. Now it would be where it corresponds by undoing the operation, but if we see at some point it does not update the mesh. We can refresh it with the shortcut V. Now the surface is correctly generated again. Then if I deleted this object, we have this jump. When going to create a new object at the end of the branch, as you can see it will be created with the name and the mesh is no longer correct.
so to delete any object we must delete it with the addons delete. And so the order of the objects will be recalculated and I can generate a new object with the correct mesh generation. So knowing this, keep the objects in the branches tidy and everything will work perfectly. The addons functions will help you with this, simply do not manually delete operations we must use the addons tools. We are going to create an object to create a new branch. When creating a new object manually, we must create it in the CNE collection. If we create it within a collection of some branch, this object will be included in the generation of the mesh of that branch. Now, yes, we create a new branch. We give it a name, it is important to name the branches correctly for proper functioning, it should always have character name and branch name. We can subdivide the object and work with modifiers but it is recommended not to accumulate modifiers that can slow down the work with the branches. We apply the modifier. We have the keyboard shortcut J to visualize the object axis. And as always we relocate and edit the branch. Let's see some of the most used options in the add-in. Here we can insert n number of objects between the selected objects. Establishing the number and with the keyboard shortcut I. We insert those objects. As always we can configure the branch hierarchy in one direction or another. We relocate it. We can use sculpting to better define the shape of the objects. Another option you will use a lot is the possibility of replacing all selected objects with the active object. With the s.user, single user, option checked it will be a single mesh if we uncheck it. The objects can all be edited at the same time because they will share the mesh. Again, new branch from an object of the finger branch. And we define the shape of what the nail branch will be. Again, we will make the nail branch have its own hierarchy, and the parent object within the nail will be the child of the finger. This way we easily have a finger configured with articulations and a nail that perfectly follows the finger. And this we will join to the arm. We can give a more appropriate color to the nail. And we can use the seed.mat copy material option. So that the selected objects take the material of the active object. We can activate and deactivate the hierarchy to edit all objects individually or without having to remove the hierarchy to edit in edit mode. Another important option is duplicate branch, which allows us to duplicate branches. For this option it is important to know the parent option will allow us to duplicate maintaining the hierarchies we had. For example, we duplicate this finger with its nail, select one or more objects from each branch to duplicate and thus duplicate. We maintain the hierarchy thanks to having the parent option checked.
Let's see a very important option that should always be enabled so that something like this does not happen to us. Look at this collection of objects in this new branch, they started with a numbering that is not correct. Here you can see objects that were deleted, which do not have any users using that mesh, but that are still in the scene, and this can cause problems for any new objects we want to create because the name is already being used. This is because we did not have the purge mesh option selected when deleting an object. This option deletes objects that are not being used in the scene. This avoids conflicts with names when creating a new one and prevents errors from occurring when creating the new object because a mesh with that name already existed. By enabling this, we will avoid this problem. Just keep in mind that we shouldn't have any objects in the scene that we need but don't have users, as objects without users will be deleted. As you can see, by deleting some object it performs a purge and eliminates all these objects that don't have users and could conflict with the names of future branches created. The purge mesh option should always be active when working with the add-on. Just make sure you do not lose any needed model without assigned users. It is recommended to work with a clean scene when starting each character. Now we duplicate the rest of the fingers with the parent option to keep the nail following the rest of the finger, as the branches have these hierarchies they are very easy to reposition. As we saw, we can edit all objects at the same time by temporarily removing the hierarchy with the shortcut. We scale everything to the desired size and give them the hierarchy back for the branch with the P shortcut. We eliminate this object to reduce a phalanx and finish adjusting it. This one is missing being made a child of the rest of the hand. And now we have a fully articulated arm with fingers included, so easy. We adjust the arm size and as you can see, many things repeat with just a few options we can do a lot. We will duplicate the whole arm with parent activated so we will have another articulated arm. And it's as easy as that we can explore new possibilities for the character. We will create some legs in the same way as we have been doing for the rest of the branches. We create the new branch and extrude, reposition, the same process. Giving the branch hierarchy helps us reposition it easily, and since it's easy and quick to activate or deactivate it we take advantage of it. We have used the insert option but we can also extrude from an intermediate object of the branch. It will create a new one in the direction towards the end of the branch, and the add-on will automatically rename the following objects so that the mesh continues to work in the proper direction.
We edit the objects to obtain the shape we need, like the foot sole here. We will reuse the hand fingers to make the toes, this possibility of reusing branches saves us a lot of time. We delete the part we don't need by removing objects and reposition. With the Ctrl plus L keyboard shortcut we can see the branches we have in local view for a more comfortable work. We will explain another aspect of how the add-on works to better understand it. The branches that have a direction given by the names of the objects, we can change this direction with the branch DIR option or keyboard shortcut. Here we will see that showing the names, the first will be the last and the rest will be renumbered in reverse order each time we change the direction. This is because if we create an object at the end of the branch, nothing changes, but if we create it at the beginning, in order to do this the branch direction is changed. Observe the names. This is something we also have to keep in mind when creating intermediate objects, when with the E shortcut we extrude in the middle of the branch, it will always be created in front, and rename the rest of the objects to the last so that the branch works properly. Observe the names. We can rename the branch as we want, using you know the utility of the add-in for that. So we see it will change the name of all objects, collection and block surfaces object that generates the final surface. Now that we have the branch as we want, we reuse it by duplicating with the parent option active. And as always we relocate, edit what we need. We parent the toes to the rest of the foot, and now we have an articulated leg. We can give it the same color as the body, copying the material. This way we can easily adjust proportions or explore the possibilities that our character has. Let's see how we can do mirroring of the branches that we already have. We have here the mirror mesh option, which simply adds a mirror modifier to each final object generated as you can see here. Anything we do on one side will be replicated on the other. This option has added the modifier to all branches where an object was selected. Let's see how each one has its own modifier by changing to select the final mesh, there is the mirror in each final object. We have the option to do mirroring that is called mirror branch, which in this case the selected branches will be duplicated on the other axis. Now they are new branches for the other axis, this will allow us to do asymmetric poses since they are independent branches.
Now we just have to parent the branches to the torso and we have the possibility to pose our character. Let's see a little trick to make this even faster. Since we already have the other arm parented to the torso, we can use the shortcuts to go to the beginning or end of the branch with the left or right arrow. Well, if we press the left arrow plus alt at the same time. Now we have selected the first object of the branch, plus the one that will be the parent. So selecting the two parents and pressing this keyboard shortcut, we now have the parent ready to assign it with the shortcut to make it the parent of the branches. This is a very quick way. But it can be done as we were doing before, let's see on the legs, we select the first object of the legs, and with the shortcut to go down the branch of the torso we select the one that will be the parent and we parent it. So as you can see, we now have the character easily articulated. We can use it to easily change proportions, give it the poses we want for sculpting without having to know anything about rigging. Using keyframes we can store as many poses as we want in this way. or even create an animation. Here we have a utility that allows us to remove all animation keys from the selected objects, to continue blocking and not break later because it is keys that we did not delete. Let's try giving it other proportions and taking advantage of the fact that we can easily articulate it, delete the parts from the other side and regenerate to continue having the symmetric model. If we did it with mirror branch, being new branches we quickly reassigned the parenting again. And so we have a very different character with just a few adjustments. Let's add a jaw. New branch and the usual process, as you can see they are always a few steps that are repeated and give us many possibilities. Let's make the jaw the child of the head and check that it works. We can add more divisions to the branch objects. 
We have this option to add subdivisions to the selected objects or to all objects in the branches where we have one selected. If we don't check here it does it to all the branch if we check only to the selected ones. We apply the modifier to be able to continue sculpting. We add subdivisions to the torso branch, but in this case only to the selected ones in the head area. Let's see a new function. Duplicate branch in position. With this option we can duplicate a branch with its hierarchy in the position where the cursor is located. We are going to duplicate this finger branch with its hierarchy. Now it is parented to the hand. We remove that parenting. With the keyboard shortcut K we will duplicate the branch, it will align along the Z axis with the surface. If we have the parent option selected it will duplicate with its hierarchies, if not it will only duplicate the selected one. We could orient the Z axis as we wish to have a branch projected in the direction we are looking for. As always we deactivate the parent for the branch so we can change the orientation of the object without affecting the others. And we restore it when finished. Now when inserting, it already positions the branch with the orientation we were looking for. We have the possibility to change the size of the branch I want to insert here. If we don't have any objects selected, this option will create the sphere with the size we have established. We have snap enabled for a quick creation of the volume on the surface. If we have an object selected that is not part of any branch, it will create the insertion with that object and that size. Now let's see what we can do with this option, it will take the scale and rotation of the first and last selected objects to average the intermediates. We can also reposition the selected objects on a curve. We draw the curve with Ctrl plus Y and select the objects and curve and press move to curve. We can use the property that the branch objects have hierarchy to easily reposition and explore possibilities. Let's add mirror to this horn seeing a new option. Here we could add the mirror mesh because it will be symmetric in both parts and it will not change. Applying the basic mirror mesh, it creates the mirror modifier on the generated mesh. As we are going to make the horn a child of the head, when we move the head the mirror will not work. We need the mirror modifier to have the head as target so it follows its movement. With the new mirror target option active, it will directly assign the target as the active object when assigning the modifier. Let's see how quickly it now works correctly and I don't have to go into changing the target to the modifier. Let's see more options. We can very easily replace the objects of the branch.
With the Replace Objects with Active option, we can make all selected objects be replaced by the active one. They will be placed with the positions that the object had in the branch. This allows us to quickly adapt the entire shape of the branch. Also, if we uncheck the single user option, we make all objects share the mesh. In this way, when I modify one I modify the entire branch. We can edit any of them so that all others change. Then if we want one to be a unique object again, we apply the make single user option so it does not change the rest when modified. We can edit the objects as always in edit mode, sculpting etc. Again we will use the K shortcut to create a new branch in the position we have the cursor. If we have an object selected it will create the branch starting from that object. As it activates snap, we can easily add volumes on the character's surface. Let's repeat the process here. Now the eye. We will duplicate the eye branch to make the eyelid. We duplicate for the bottom eyelid. And as always we reposition to give it more character. We continue using the reference object to start a branch with the desired size on the surface. If we did not select the object it would create the branch at the size marked in the panel as size insert. It is more convenient to scale the reference object than to change numeric values. This way we define the main volumes of the face. Similarly, we will create some large fangs. Control plus L selects all branch objects and we adjust with the function that averages intermediate objects with respect to the extremes. We parent the eye parts and mirror branch will allow asymmetrical pose for the eyes. Now we will use the new mirror mesh function again to have these branches on the other side of the face. First, the branches must have parent and the initial object drag the entire branch. If we did the mirror as in the previous version, the branches would not follow the head. Now if we use mirror target to active, the active object will be the target and all branches will move with the head. We must keep in mind that we also need to make the branches children of the head for them to follow it. We can do the same operation for the teeth since in this case they will also be symmetric objects. 
Now the target will be the jaw. We have seen that we have the ability to duplicate branches. Now we will see that we can also duplicate parts of a branch. We have shortcuts to add to the selection in one direction or the other of the branch, and by pressing duplicate selected part branch we will have a new branch from the selected objects. Here we can see how to add or subtract objects from the branch in one direction or another with the shortcuts. With the selected objects we can use this new separate option, now it will not create a duplicate but those objects will be a new branch. As in different options, if we have parenting the new branch will be a child of the previous branch. We can always easily readjust proportions and regenerate symmetry. Let's hide these branches to work more comfortably. Now we will use Block Surface's Muscle Creation function. Here we have the Muscle Creation panel. To create a muscle, we have the keyboard shortcut Y. With this we create the first insertion at the cursor position. We position the second insertion. We establish the number of intermediate objects. When we finish again with the shortcut Y it finalizes the muscle creation. This branch simulates the behavior of a muscle. Now we just have to place the insertions in their definitive position. We can adjust the objects as in any other branch. and finally parent the insertions to the torso and arm. Now when we move the arm, the muscle will adapt. We can duplicate muscles like branches, with parenting it will maintain the hierarchy. And quickly we will have another configured muscle to work when moving the arm. Let's make some more muscle repeating the process. We check that they are well parented and work as we want, or we adjust the position of the insertions. The position of the insertions is very important for them to work more credibly. So now we can mirror the arm along with the muscles, maintaining the hierarchy with the parent option. It takes a bit longer the more branches we have to duplicate, but we will have the arm hierarchies ready with parenting. We just need to parent those new muscles to the torso. We check that it works well. And we do the mirror branch for the legs. Let's see another cool function of block surfaces. The muscle flat, we will use these to simulate membranes. Let's see how we could quickly make some wings with this utility. As always we create the branches.
We duplicate. We prepare the hierarchy. Okay, now you can move them like joints. Now let's see that with the muscle flat option we will create a branch that will be generated with the objects we select. In this new branch, the surface will encompass all objects regardless of order the surface will encompass everything. At the same time that the surface is created, the objects of this new branch will be children of the ones used to create it. So when we move the branches the surface will adapt and we will have the effect of a membrane that stretches to its insertions. These objects cannot be selected in blocking mode for a more comfortable work. In blocking mode we only select the normal branches and these we will have to enter muscle flat mode. So we can edit this branch giving it the thickness we want. We capture the scale so that the next membranes have the same thickness. We return to blocking mode to be able to select the branches and generate the next membranes for each joint. So with a quite fast process we have some wings, articulated, whose membrane adapts to the shapes and we can easily readjust or simply pose as we want. Now to do the symmetry of these wings. We can mirror the branches, but the muscle flat objects don't have mirror implemented automatically yet. We should duplicate the branches and generate the muscle flats on the symmetrical wings. We deactivate the parent option so that there are no problems with the membranes when mirroring. And we repeat the process for the opposite side. We can now check that everything is properly parented. Now that we have everything working correctly, we can pose something. We create an initial keyframe in the timeline to maintain the base pose. And we'll create another pose at any other time on the timeline, this will serve us to store all the poses we want. Or even play with the animation. Selecting all objects and pressing the I keyboard shortcut creates the key for the timeline. Now slowly we start looking for the pose. The block surfaces selection tools will help us be faster posing the character. We have to keep in mind that this is not a rig, we don't have limitations to move the joints. So we have to try not to exceed movements that would be natural. But this freedom also allows us to make many small adjustments that serve us for the model to look good in the pose we want. Some parts may overlap others, we can manually adjust them. When we have the desired pose, we will again select all objects and create the key in the timeline to store it. Here we have an option that allows us to see the model with shade smooth. We need to know that it is only a visual effect, and when we are going to generate the final mesh it is better to have it deactivated. This way we will see how many actual faces the polygons have and it gives us a better idea of what the final generated mesh will be like.
since the final mesh is generated with as much smoothness as the objects in the branch have. This way we can see them better. To add more smoothness to the final mesh we have these options before generating it. We can add subdivisions to the branch objects in these options as we already saw. We put the number of subdivisions and whether to apply to the selected objects or the entire branch. And we apply the modifier. So now we can generate the mesh. The first step is to prepare the block surfaces object. This step simply selects the objects that will generate the final mesh. By generating block surfaces it will create a collection called surface. In this collection it will create a duplicate of the final objects with the geometry nodes applied. As you can see here, we can generate as many final models as we want and new surface collections will be created with each one. Now we could join the objects so they do more comfortable work by grouping them to our interest. This way later we can show or hide to sculpt comfortably. Or because they have more or less details and a different voxel size can be given for the remesh. We try with an appropriate voxel size for each part. And when we have the right resolution for the remesh. Finally we apply the remesh modifier and we can sculpt. Now we can join the body and apply a unified remesh to the whole thing. And this is how we could generate as many models to sculpt as we want. And this has been an overview of the workflow with the add-in. We have many options left to see. You can see them in detail in the video manual. And many videos showing other characters in the future. Don't miss it. If you want to help with the add-in development, you know, share, like, and don't miss our next videos. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for your support.